but she certainly lives up to her name. What, Phantom? Yes. Everyone's talking about this boat of yours, but no one else has actually seen her. That's exactly the way I intend to keep it. Till the actual race, I mean. How do you rate her chances? Who are you using for crew? Well, I thought you and I would make quite a formidable team. Don't you think? Yes. Yes, I do. Is Avril into Barracuda? Not yet, but she will. I have a feeling Relton are going to need all the publicity they can get. Might be rather fun beating her. <laughs> Glad to see you haven't wrecked the Xanadu while I've been away. <laughs> How's it going then, young Tony? Oh, it's going all right, Mr. Roth. I think I can have a word with you in private. Tell me what. Oh, you're back then. Good thinking, Bill. Uh, Tony, would you go and check the block on the bowsprit? I've checked it. Yeah, we'll check it again, will you? Jack, we've got a talk. Oh, was the honeymoon all right, Jack? Hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, yeah, Billy, it was great, great. Thanks for asking. Listen, this is important. Yeah, OK, OK, I'll get the picture. I'll sort my mail out first, OK? Yeah, right. And if Mrs Harvey calls, tell her to ring her back, will you? Why? You better if you do. Vanessa, you must stop blaming yourself. How can I? David is my brother. Yes, but you're not his keeper. No. No, but I should have warned you. Oh, how could you? You weren't to know. You mean this wasn't the first time? No. Years ago, David got Klaus involved in a scheme. Klaus lost a great deal of money. I only found out about it much later. Didn't Klaus prosecute? No, he said it would be too difficult to prove and perhaps it wasn't really intentional. But the real reason was David was my brother. I see. Oh, well, I have to admit that if you had warned me, it would have saved us a great deal of money. Yes, I know, but I honestly believed he'd changed. I truly thought those days were over. Just goes to show what happens when you give someone the benefit of the doubt. Well, I have to tell you that if Interpol do manage to trace him, Laura and I fully intend to bring him to trial. Good. That still doesn't lessen my responsibility, though. Well... Oh, hello, Vanessa. Look, uh, I'm sorry to barge in, but uh, I thought you might be interested in this. What is it? Relton Marine are currently sailing in troubled waters. Managing Director Avril Rolfe is being personally blamed for failing to prevent the loss of a quarter of a million pounds in a fraud that has just been perpetrated against the company. Failing a satisfactory explanation, shareholders may soon be asking her to walk the plank. I didn't know you'd spoken to the press. I haven't. You know, I've got a nasty feeling Charles is behind this. Yes. And I suppose his next move will be a vote of no confidence. Undoubtedly. It's not likely to pass up a chance like this. What do you mean you don't believe it? I'm telling you, it's true. Yeah, all right, Bill, all right. Just calm down and let's just take this one step at a time. Now, you reckon that Tony broke in here, stole this file that the police have now got. Right. And these mysterious documents which I know nothing about, somehow implicate Kate and Admiral Redford. Yeah, and she's up in mad. Well, never mind about Kate. What does Tony have to say about it? He denies it. Well, he would, wouldn't he? But it's got to be him. Why? Oh, Jack, he's had one go at your files already. It's obvious. He didn't find what he wanted then, so he came back for a second choice. It's obvious, eh? OK, OK. So this time, he does find out what he wants, right? Then, having risked being caught, he takes it away and promptly ditches it. Doesn't make sense, Bill. Unless he Exactly. Calls. Unless he wanted the police to find it. Right, Jeremy, get all the coverage you can. Personal involvement? Oh, yes, I like it. <laughs> Clouded judgment? Yeah, even better. Make a good headline in the business section. Get it on the streets as soon as you can, Jeremy. Bye now. Headline? 
your sponsorship. All falling into place. Ah, oh, Admiral, how good to see you again. And you, my dear. You know Gerald Urquhart? Oh, yes. Serving in a different ship the last time we met. Uh, yeah, well, this is a happier one, sir. Well, I'm sure it is. Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. This is just a quick courtesy call, really. I'm doing the round of all Sir John's personal clients. Yes, I was very sorry to hear that Sir John was forced to go in the way he was. No one more than I. He's one of my oldest friends. There is some speculation as to who engineered that manoeuvre. No, I'm sure there is. Please, sit down. Thank you. Well, I understand you've got yourself into a bit of a mess. How are you planning to get out of it? Well, Gerald and I have made a few calculations. We can muster up enough support to survive a vote of no confidence. Uh -huh. Any hope of this con man being brought to book? The police say it might take quite a long time to trace him. Yes, then, of course, there's a question of extradition. Meanwhile, I see the press are already having a field day at your expense. And no doubt other interested parties will be only too eager to infer that you are gullible and therefore not fit to run this company. And where actually do you stand in all this, Admiral? For the moment, strictly on the sidelines. She handled better than I thought she would. Yeah, I'm pleased with her. What does Admiral think? Hasn't been out yet. Oh. You know, she may be a very fine boat, Leo, but I think you're going to regret persuading me to let Relton take on the distribution. Yeah, I didn't persuade you, Laura. It was a condition, remember? Yeah, well, all right, whatever. Why don't you put it to Avril that Leisure Cruise takes over the distribution? I mean, I'm just trying to help you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll think about it. Good. Have you heard from Abby yet? No, except to say that she arrived safely in America. Ah, well, I've been in touch with Orin, and apparently they're going to be there for some time. Oh, are they? Sorry. I didn't mean to pry. Yeah, well, the point is, ever since you went, Mrs. Sayers has been getting at me. I mean, I try to do my best, but I can't seem to do anything right in his eyes. Mm, that's a fact. It's true. I mean, even accused me of this break-in. Which, of course, you had nothing to do with. No, Mr. Rolfe, I swear yeah, to you. Yeah, all right, lad, all right. Forget this self-righteous indignation act. And let's go back to square one. Go on, sit down. Now, why did you get out this personnel file? Oh, Mr. Rolfe. And this time, I want the truth. Well, it's silly, really. Go on, then. Make me laugh. Well, this mate of mine, he reckoned his uncle worked in the yard here years ago. So I asked some of the men, and they said he might have, but they'd never heard of him. No? Uh, Harris. David Harris. So you decided to check for yourself? Well, yes. What a load of bull and cock. Now, you listen to me, Tony. Jack. What I want to say to you... I want a word with you. Yes, uh, certainly, Kate. Certainly. I'd better get back to work then. Right. I'll see you later, Len. Morning, Tony. Hi. Now then, Jack. Mm. Uh, sit down, Kate. Right. What can I do for you? I have a bone to pick with you. 